All right, the very first thing that I want to say for this video is thank you everybody so far for the support. You guys have all been awesome. I've seen so many people commenting on my videos. I've been able to chat with some people that you know, know some people from tournaments that I've casted so far and it's a pretty awesome feeling to be able to uh, meet so many cool people from the Legends of Rune Terror community. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. But enough of that sappy stuff. Let's get into why we're here. This is going to be a scout deck video. So I'm sure you guys have heard of it. We got, we've got MF, Misfortune, and Quinn, both two newly released champions. Quinn for Demacia, MF for Bilgewater. And God, do they work well together. This scout deck is insane. And yes, it does use... Bannerman. Bannerman. I love saying that. That just that doesn't get old, man. Alright. <laughs> anyway, I feel like an idiot. Alright. So this deck, pretty sick. It's a mid-range deck. It's very, very fast. You're gonna see here another newly released six cost card, which you'll see actually win a game here in a second. I believe it's the first of the two games. Before we go over that, let's go through this deck and see what it's all about. So here is the one, the only Scouts, not Bannerman. Finally, this deck is not named Bannerman, and I will even say, oh my god, Bannerman might not be like the best card in this deck. Like, this deck could probably get by without Bannerman. Now, Bannerman makes it a lot better, so I'm not gonna go that far, but um, we're gonna see in a second why there's, there's so many other good cards and good options for this deck right now. So, First thing I want to point out is, holy bejesus, the amount of one-cost cards in this deck. We have two Scythria, two Fleet Feather, or sorry, three Scythria, three Fleet Feather, three Jagged Butcher, which is a new card um, when you plunder, grant me plus one, plus one. This plunder effect is usually only going to be going off after you're able to attack for the turn. So in all reality, this is just, you know, three more Scythrias in your deck, and every once in a while, late game, you'll be able to... Uh, pull off one of these bad boys for a nice little 3-3 that can get buffed by Bannerman to be a 1-cost 4-4. Then we have uh, the usual, you know, 2 costs. We got 3 Bright Steel, 3 War Chefs, and this card. This card is a thing. My God, I don't know how I feel about it. Everybody was like, oh man, a 3-cost 4-4. What the heck are we going to do? I don't know. This card to me just screams power creep, but it's like the bane of this deck's, like, it's the bane of all decks that play against this deck. This card is ridiculous. And not only that, Grizzled Ranger can summon three more. So you essentially have six, three cost four fours in your deck. Uh, technically, it costs four with Grizzled Ranger, but you're getting a 4-1 with Scout and a Last Breath Effect, which is very, very good. Now, uh, on top of that, we have the three set three of the Bold. You can see here, there is no big nine cost dude, right? Uh, we do not have, come on, I thought I was going to remember the name. I don't remember it. Bright Steel Formation. He's not in here. Why? He's too slow. That's It's too far away. Nine cost, mm, we don't want no nine cost up in here. We want things that are going to flood the board and flood the board fast. Even though this is a mid-range deck, this is even quicker uh, than the Bannerman decks of old, if you can believe that. Mainly because of this puppy. Citrus Courier, heal all allies and your Nexus 3, then rally. This card is freaking great. Uh, I'm not, Again, I'm not sure how I feel about this card either. This card might need a little bit of a nerf. I've said this a million times. Heal allies and your Nexus 3. I kind of value that as a 3 cost. Rally, Relentless Pursuit cost 3. That's a 3 cost. You're essentially getting a 0 cost 4, 5. I think that's a little bit busted. Yeah, you have to plunder to get the effect off, but mm -mm. I think this should be like a 3-4 or something like that. So we'll see what they do with this card. But this deck, uh, this card allows this deck to be super fast and win very quick. If you guys haven't checked out these two champions, actually links to uh, their reveal videos below in the description. I did those last week before the set came out. And God, they're good. Everybody, I think, was worried that Quinn would not be a good champion. Yeah, nah, -uh, not even close. I think people highly underestimated how good Scout is. And Scout, with Misfortune, needing to, uh, you know, see so you attack four times to level up. It's pretty ridiculous. You can level up in two turns. 
Uh, Misfortune is also insane in the mirror match and just in general. And you're going to see that in the two games coming up. Quinn is also insane with the Valor. It's just another unit. You can buff with Bannerman. You can buff with War Chefs, all sorts of stuff. What I will say, this deck has far less combat tricks. Only has two single combat, one Ranger's Resolve, and a Radiant Strike. That is because it doesn't need no combat tricks. It's too good for combat tricks. This card literally just wants to throw all of its units on the field and just go ham. Um, I, you know, I'm like this this far away from calling it like a go face deck, like aggro, but it's it's technically not. It is mid range. It's just a very aggressive mid range deck. So uh, without getting too far into it, let's just go straight into the gameplay and you'll see exactly what I mean. All right. So we have our first matchup here, which is essentially a uh, control matchup. Thresh, Elise, and Trindamir. I'm still not sold on... I don't understand why people play Elise with Thresh so often. I mean, I get it. I, I get technically it summons another token. I don't know. I don't like it. Anyways, we got our first game. And boy, is this a good hand. God, that feels good. One, two, three. We're just missing, honestly, like a grizzled uh, scout. God, I already forgot that freaking name of the card. Uh, for a four drop for this to be perfect otherwise it's a, a damn good hand we do have misfortune and quinn which is super good to start off uh the good thing about misfortune like for example the board that my opponent has right now has two one health followers that could just chump block you know my scythria and my bird and kill the bird and the scythria and the misfortune allows me to attack with both of them and if akiyama here does decide to block both of the units they're just going to die to her passive effect that goes off when uh, my units attack. So very, very strong effect to also protect your, you know, your lower costing units from getting chumped down early and just getting killed. Now that three, two definitely hurts. Not going to lie. It feels bad. Um, so I do decide to just pull it with the bird here, I believe, just to get it off the board. It honestly is not a very good trade for me. He gets a draw. Uh, but I do get to push some damage through here. Or sorry, I don't get to push some damage through. That is the one bad thing about Misfortune. It's, you know, I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad. But when you do kill the two units like you see here like this, they still do the whole, you know, you see the little the rectangles there. They still do block the damage. So you can't really push through as much damage as you like. But you're not worried about that really with this deck. This deck is tempo focused. You just want to keep units on the field. As long as you keep units on the field, you're golden. So things like Grasp of the Undying, Black Spear, stuff like that. Um, yeah, obviously those are going to hurt. But those are single target spells. Um, so honestly, if my opponent's using them, like let's say he grasps my War Chefs. I don't really care because I'll just have another unit to play, right? This deck has like four or five spells in it mainly units i'm just going to be able to replace them with bigger units more often than not what i am really worried about is ruination and before i play this quinn here i'm actually thinking to the next turn okay my opponent's on eight mana there's nothing he can do this turn so i can you know i could go all in if i wanted to but i am worried about him having priority on the following turn and being able to ruination now he does have to play the Thresh. And this is why I did decide to play the Quinn because I figured, okay, even if he plays the Ruination next turn and plays nothing here, um, he's blowing a lot of mana if that's the case. And I am still pushing a ridiculous amount of damage through to his face, uh, which overall I think is, is better for me in a control matchup, right? So he does play the Thresh to try to mitigate some of that damage. But this is where Misfortune and Quinn combined are just absolutely nuts. I get the first attack with the scout. Then I'm going to be able to attack again. All right. So it's, it's not quite a rally. It's like half a rally, <laughs> but it's like a rally in spirit. And now I'm able to actually um, kill this thresh here, which you'll see in a second. So this is one thing that you have to keep an eye on with misfortune. You can carefully plan your attack so that with misfortune's effect, it forces your opponent to take really bad blocks. Because Misfortune's effect is going to trigger here, I know that that Thresh is really only going to be at two health. So if I attack with everything that has at least two attack, I'm golden. And I know my Quinn is now safe, right? So uh, this is a great way to use Misfortune. It allows it allows you to you know chump down your opponent's field so that they lose their blockers. You take better trades than them. 
ultimately giving you better tempo, which again, like I mentioned, is ultimately the thing that you want to focus on with this deck. Um, again, unfortunately, it kills the spider, but the spider does still block uh, for my opponent. So he's not taking quite as much damage as I'd like, but I very clearly am in the lead here. Now, the only way that he gets back into this game is with Ruination. So if he plays Ruination here, okay, this game's going to go on a little bit longer, but as you can see, that Make It Rain is actually a misfortune. I also have the Grizzled Ranger in my hand, so I do have plenty of units to put back onto the board. He plays the Omen Hawk and shows that he does not have Ruination. So this is one of the more interesting combos in this deck that you are almost never going to see. You do not play Make It Rain. Make It Rain is just a misfortune that I had in my hand while I had one on the field. Make It Rain, in that particular way, is just about the only way that you will get Citrus Courier to trigger its plunder effect on your opponent's turn. And that's exactly what we do here. And this also allows me to level up my Quinn. Uh, which additionally gives me the extra damage that I'm going to need. That is an interaction that you will not see very much, but it is something to look out for, and it is an interesting uh, thing that just makes Misfortune that much better in this deck. So now we have the mirror match. Fun, fun, right? Uh, <laughs> you hate you hate the mirror match on ladder because it just feels really bad. A lot of it has to do with um, you know how well you're drawing, if your opponent gets a bannerman off versus if you get a bannerman off. But as you'll see here, I actually very clearly have what seems to be the worst hand, right? I'm not drawing a one drop or a two drop right now. And my opponent, I believe, plays a one drop and two drop in the next couple of turns. So here's the thing with the mirror match, though. Grizzled Ranger is probably about the most important card in your deck, followed by Misfortune in the mirror match. So we saw how important Quinn was uh, in the control matchup. Quinn is also decently important in the aggro matchup. So you can pull some of the uh, the units that your opponent's saving to try to attack with, uh, like the Legion, Grenadier, stuff like that. In this case, you want to, you know, obviously keep up tempo with your opponent, but you need stronger followers than your opponent has. In addition to that, the Grizzled Ranger is like two units in one. So the Grizzled Ranger is going to be able to almost always trade with something because I know if... If my opponent's playing the similar deck to what I'm playing, he really only has single combat and a Radiant Strike for combat tricks. And there's a low probability that he even has that in his hand. So I know that those Grizzled Rangers are just going to trade and give me a free free unit, right? So very awesome feeling. Um, I did decide to barrier my bigger Badger Bear here. If you guys watched the cast over the weekend, <laughs> this is now the card's name is Bigger Badger Bear. Um... So that it kind of effectively negates his attack. He couldn't attack with the Misfortune because I can block with the Badger Bear. And, or sorry, with the uh, with the Barriered Unit. And same deal with the 4-4. But his Misfortune does actually, uh, the effect, get rid of my Barrier, which feels bad. But my Badger Bear does still survive. So you can see here now we're trading Bannermans. So I have essentially stabilized, which is really good. And not only that... I've stabilized without playing both Grizzled Rangers. So now I'm able to make trades here and basically go even. Okay, he has three mana. He could have a single combat or, or something like that. If he plays it, he plays it. I have one that I can use in return. So I'm not all too worried about that, which is why I can go in here. He obviously can't, uh, you know, block with the Misfortune because he wants the Misfortune to live. Now, I do decide here to do the Radiant Strike and the single combat, which is... I'm not going to lie, pretty risky. If he had a single combat in return on his Badger Bear, um, that would have felt bad. I would have saved my War Chefs though. So, I mean, there is some some upside to that. Uh, but I felt like I had to do that in that situation. And the reason why is Misfortune is an incredibly good card in this matchup. You'll see towards the end of this game exactly why. Um, and it has to do with Grizzled Ranger. So we just went over how good Grizzled Ranger is. Grizzled Ranger only has one health. It's obviously the inherent downside of playing it. The good thing about that, or sorry, the bad thing about that against a Misfortune is that you basically can't block with Grizzled Ranger and get any of the value for his four attack. Like the reason why Grizzled Ranger is good in the mirror match is because the four attack will just get uh, sunk into something and likely kill it. Exactly what's happening here, right? I get the trade and I get a replacement unit. That's incredibly strong right now. 
if he were attacking with a misfortune in his back line, my guy would have died and he would have kept his unit because of misfortune's effect. So that's a very, very big deal in this matchup. And you can see having both of these grizzled rangers now is going to put me ahead. He actually does have one in return, but now I have the misfortune. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and just attack with the scout, which now he either has to take four damage or block. He decides to block with his badger bear, which I think was a misplay on his part. But now again, I get a free trade. I get rid of his 4-4 four, four and, and replace it, basically four free and replace it with a 4-4 four, four of my own. Now I'm attacking again and her effect is going off again, which means this grizzled ranger is basically just saving him four damage, which is huge for me. So I'm able to negate his trade after I just got a trade. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you want to try to play Misfortune. Um, if you're not playing it on turn three, strictly to just get her leveled up early, you want to try to play it on a turn when your opponent's lower on mana. You think that you know he or she's not going to be able to deal with the Misfortune. And you can go ahead and attack twice with it to really get the most possible value out of her effect. Okay. Wow, that was a lot. All right, now we have Scythria, <laughs> okay? So, Scythria, okay, this is definitely pretty crappy that uh, my opponent drew Scythria. Uh, they are deciding to not attack with the Quinn because I have the two four fours. I could block and kill it. This also tells me that they likely don't have a single combat in hand. Otherwise, they would have been able to attack. I decide to take the damage because, and that it's risky because now I'm pretty low. I decide to do that because I have good old Plunderer in my hand, right? And even with that Bannerman, I am I can pull out a win here with this Citrus Courier. And this is exactly where you're going to see how ridiculous this is, okay? So first off, we have Misfortune. Misfortune um, is going to basically just add some extra damage here, which is going to help a lot uh, because it's going to chunk down the bigger units like the Cythria. And, um, I mean, everything else was going to die anyways, but basically the Scythria, um, I don't think that chump damage ends up mattering too much, but what she does do is also allow for this plunder effect to go off. So my opponent just played the two, two, I'm able to one up them and play the three, three and rally. So misfortune is going to level up now a leveled up misfortune feels super good. Pair it with the war chefs. She's going to level up game plus one. She's going to Warshaps plus one. She's at five. Nothing can block and kill it because if he blocks with the Scythria, Misfortune's effect is going to kill it. So essentially, everything that he has is going to die uh, but the four five, the Quinn, to Misfortune's effect. Um, and because of Misfortune actually, oddly enough, getting overwhelmed, uh, my opponent dies anyways. I don't know if he realized that because he probably... I think he could have lived one more turn if he blocked differently. I mean, I pretty much had the game sealed up there anyways. The Overwhelm definitely helps. All right, that's a wrap on the Misfortune Quinn deck. Again, I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of this on the ladder. Uh, this is essentially a good example of how to play it. And we had a mirror match in there, which I'm sure you're going to come across a lot on the ladder as well because this is a very highly played deck right now until it likely gets some cards nerfed uh, during the next patch release next week, which we'll probably have a video on as well. So if you like the video, last minute, real quick, don't forget to like the video and as always, if you're new to the channel, hit the sub button. If you haven't already, you're kind of behind. All right, hit the sub button. But I'll let you go. As always, everybody, stay healthy. Stay positive. I hope shit just works for you. And peace out. Where are you, Bonaman? What did I name you? Oh, that's right. I actually named it Scouts for once. It's finally not named Bannerman.